2013, for the first time in the history of China, a major provincial chairman was brought to trial and sentenced to life imprisonment, and that was Bo Xilai. But it didn't stop there. His wife, Gu Kailai, was also sentenced to death. So what happened? What crimes had these two committed that led the Chinese Communist Party to take such drastic measures? Let's find out in today's video. I'm Shannon 8X. Welcome to Cold Case Killers. The narrative unfolds with the life of Gu Kai Lai, a Chinese lawyer and entrepreneur born in 1958, who emerged from an illustrious lineage. Her father, General Gu Jingsheng, was a celebrated revolutionary figure before the Chinese Communist Party seized power. Despite his notable contributions, he faced imprisonment during the tumultuous Cultural Revolution, a fate that also forced Gu into humble occupations at a butcher shop and a textile factory. Gu's path crossed with Bo Xi Lai's in 1984 during a field trip in Liaoning province, where Bo served as the secretary of the county party committee. Sparks flew, leading to a swift romance and the birth of their son, Bo Guagua, who later attended prestigious institutions such as Harrow School, Balliol College at Oxford, and Harvard's Kennedy School of Government. To the public eye, Gu and Bo were the quintessence of power and influence within the Chinese political sphere. Bo Xilai, endowed with an illustrious background and a promising political future, and Gu Kailai, a formidable lawyer and the founder of the Kailai Law Firm in Beijing, carved a niche for themselves. Gu, in her legal career, achieved unprecedented milestones, including being the first Chinese lawyer to secure a civil case victory in the United States, defending several greater China area companies in a dispute related to Mobile, Alabama. An accomplished author, Gu didn't shy away from expressing her bold political and diplomatic views, especially her critical stance on American culture and judiciary, which she lambasted after a visit to the United States, dismissing the American legal system as inept. In 2007, with Bo Xilai ascending to the role of party secretary in Chongqing, Gu made a strategic decision to close her law firm, aiming to quell any speculation that her professional success was intertwined with Bo's political stature. The couple adeptly crafted an image of glamour, fairness, and incorruptibility, epitomizing the aspirations of numerous Chinese families. Yet beneath the veneer of success, their domestic life was fraught with tension, primarily due to Bo's dalliances with numerous women, notably with Zhang Weiji, a striking TV news anchor from Dalian. This marked the beginning of their unraveling, a tale of power, betrayal, and scandal that captivated and shook the nation. While serving as the mayor of Dalian City, Mr. Bo Xilai was entangled in affairs with numerous women, but his liaison with the broadcaster Zhang Weiji stood out, especially after she bore him a daughter. This affair became the talk of Dalian, with Zhang Weiji not hesitating to flaunt her influence, offering to pass messages to Bo Xilai on behalf of her suitors. In a bid to silence the scandal, Mrs. Gu Kailai enlisted the help of billionaire Tu Min, chairman of the Thuk Duk Dalian Group, to offer Zhang Weijia $1.6 million to sever ties with Bo Xilai and keep the affair under wraps. Given Bo Xilai's esteemed political status, Tu Min was already in the habit of lavishing the family with opulent gifts to curry favor for business advantages. Additionally, Gu coerced Zhang Weiji to leave Dalian, abandon her job, and take her daughter far from the scandal's epicenter. Bo Xilai's flamboyance was on full display in 1994 when he introduced a squad of female mounted police officers in Dalian, chosen for their youth and beauty, a move that sparked controversy over its extravagant cost amid budget constraints. Rumors swirl about the potential disbandment of this glamorous police unit. Beyond this, Bo Xilai's romantic entanglements allegedly include over a hundred women, 
spanning actresses, models, and TV personalities. In a tale of reciprocal betrayal, Gukaile sought her own affairs, relocating to England with their son, Boguagua, where she inhabited a three-bedroom apartment reportedly shared with three men, including the French architect, Patrick Henry de Veller. Her relationships extended to Wang Lijun, the former police chief of Chongqing, with whom she shared a close and emotionally charged connection. Wang's letters to Gu Kalai reveal a man overwhelmed by his clandestine affection. Eyewitnesses near Gu Kalai's residence spoke of her initial shyness, quickly evolving into a strategy that attracted numerous admirers. Speculations abound about her intimate relationship with the British businessman, Neil Haywood, while residing in the coastal town of Bournemouth, Dorset, where Haywood was seen as a pillar of support amid Boshilai's indiscretions. This intricate web of relationships, particularly between Gu Kai Lai and Neil Haywood, laid the groundwork for a series of catastrophic events that would shake the very foundations of Chinese political life. Over a decade ago, Neil Haywood ventured into China, founding Haywood Boddington Associated Consulting to champion the interests of British firms within Chinese borders. With his fluent Chinese and a Chinese wife by his side, Haywood became an indispensable conduit between foreign enterprises and China's power brokers, including Mrs. Gu Kalai, the spouse of the influential Bo Xilai. Bo's previous roles spanned Mayor of Dalian and Minister of Commerce, culminating in his position as the party secretary of Chongqing. The Kailai law firm, under Gu's helm in Chongqing, was renowned for its competitive fees and emerged as the essential passage for foreign corporations aspiring to penetrate the Chongqing market. Among Haywood's clientele was Hacklett and Company, a consultancy founded by a former MI6 officer, fueling speculation, later quashed by Foreign Secretary William Haig, about Haywood's alleged espionage for Britain. Haywood's initial encounter with the Bo family dates back to Bo Xilai's mayoral tenure in Dalian, quickly evolving into a pivotal alliance. Acting on the Bo family's behalf, Haywood navigated business dealings with external parties, ensuring Bo Xilai remained unblemished by potential scandals. The relationship, however, took a dramatic turn in October 2011, when Gu Kailai sought Haywood's assistance in transferring a substantial sum overseas. Haywood's demand for a higher commission led to a bitter exchange, with Gu labeling him insatiably greedy. Haywood countered with a veiled threat, hinting at his capability to dismantle the Bogu dynasty by revealing their clandestine financial maneuvers abroad should Gu persist in her illicit requests. Complicating matters further, Bo Xilai caught wind of an unusually intimate bond between Gu Kalai and Neil Haywood. Feeling cornered, Haywood considered withdrawing, but was met with resistance from Gu, who faced threats of exposure. Haywood insinuated he would unveil everything from the corrupt funding of their son Bo Guagua's education in England to the family's illicit money laundering operations, even directly messaging Bo Guagua with ominous warnings about disclosing their legal transgressions. From confidants to adversaries, Gu Kai Lai found herself at a crossroads, poised to protect her interests at any cost. On November 12, 2011, she orchestrated a meeting with Haywood at a hotel in Chongqing under the guise of business discussions. Zhang Xiaojun, Bo Xilai's trusted aide and former bodyguard to Bo's father, was dispatched to greet Haywood. The following day, November 13, Zhang escorted Haywood to room 1605 of the Lucky Holiday Hotel in Chongqing's Nanyan district, setting the stage for a pivotal chapter in this saga. Gu Kai Lai meticulously orchestrated Neil Haywood's demise with chilling precision. The sinister plot unfolded as she intoxicated Haywood, leading to his fall in the bathroom. It was Zhang Xiaojun under Gu's direction, who then maneuvered the inebriated Haywood onto the hotel bed. In a macabre finale, Gu administered a lethal dose of poison into his mouth. As Haywood's body rejected the toxic substance and he gasped for water, Gu coldly concocted a cyanide-laced drink, feigning concern as she delivered the fatal mixture to him. 
To stage a scene of accidental overdose, Gu callously scattered pills around the room, simulating a drug misuse scenario. In a final act of deception, Gu hung a do not disturb sign on the door and instructed the hotel staff to avoid disturbing the occupant of room 1605, as corroborated by a hotel employee's testimony. The grim discovery of Neil Haywood's body on the morning of November 15, 2011, in a Chongqing hotel room, marked the beginning of a cover-up. Initially ruled as death by alcohol poisoning, the investigation was conspicuously steered by individuals with ties to the Gu family, effectively concealing Gu Kailai's involvement. Employing a concoction of falsified statements, hidden evidence, and deceptive tactics, the investigation team falsely pinpointed Haywood's death to a supposed alcohol-induced stroke, a conclusion far removed from reality given Haywood's non-alcoholic nature. In an egregious manipulation of justice, Haywood's family was coerced into accepting this fabricated cause of death, and his body was hastily cremated, foregoing an autopsy. This meticulously crafted facade, however, was on the brink of shattering, laying bare the machinations of Gukalai, Bo Shilai, and their co-conspirators due to an unforeseen event that threatened to unravel their web of deceit. The incident originated from Wang Li Jun, Bo Shilai's right-hand man and also Gu Kailai's lover. From the moment he discovered Gu Kailai's illicit relationship with Neil Haywood, Wang Li Jun was consumed by jealousy. However, jealousy was not his primary motive for seeking to dismantle the political careers of Bo Shilai and Gu Kailai. Living a lifestyle reminiscent of a feudal lord and harboring illusions of unchecked personal power, Bo Shilai's ambition grew to the point where he aimed to dominate Chinese politics entirely. Under Bo Shilai's orders, Wang Lijun established an electronic surveillance network throughout Chongqing in an effort to suppress crime in the city. This network was involved in recording, eavesdropping on phone calls, and monitoring internet activities. However, this surveillance system targeted not only local criminals, but also senior central leaders, including President Hu Jintao. Bo Shilai had wiretapped all senior leaders who visited Chongqing. The situation escalated when it was discovered that a phone call between President Hu Jintao and anti-corruption official Ma Wen had been intercepted. This revelation angered Beijing, prompting the dispatch of four independent investigation teams to Chongqing. At that point, suspicion centered on Wang Lijun, the architect of the eavesdropping campaign. During the investigation, Wang became infuriated with Bo for deliberately shifting all the blame onto him. The tension heightened when Wang discovered that he and his wife had also been subjects of wiretapping under Bo's instructions. Regarding the case of Neil Haywood's death, Gu Kai Lai had revealed her plan to Wang before executing it, and Wang, using his shrewdness, recorded their conversation. He later used the recording to confront Bo Shi Lai, demanding benefits. This action infuriated Bo Shalai, who assaulted Wang during a meeting and decided to hinder the murder investigation, fearing its impact on his political career. Unable to tolerate these actions, Wang resolved to betray Bo Shilai in retaliation. Wang then instructed his subordinates to gather evidence against Gu Kailai, meticulously distributing it among several trusted police officers for safekeeping, including a sample of Mr. Haywood's heart tissue and a secret recording of Gu Kailai's confession. Typically, a criminal seeking to disassociate from a gang might turn to the police for protection. However, in Chongqing and for Wang Lejun specifically, there were no such options left. Consequently, Wang made a critical decision to seek refuge at the U.S. Consulate General in Chengdu, fully aware that this move could potentially result in charges of treason against him. At this time, the Beijing government took notice of Wang Lijun's actions. They immediately contacted Wang through the U.S. Consulate General and brought him back to Beijing. The Chinese Ministry of Public Security began to pay attention to Wang's information that identified Gu Kalai as the primary suspect in the murder. Despite him having sent this information to the Ministry of Public Security 
twice before seeking refuge in the U.S. Consulate General, once anonymously and once publicly. Subsequently, the Chinese Ministry of Public Security established a new specialized committee focusing on Gu Kalai from March 15, 2012. The investigation, prosecution, and trial were respectively assigned to the Public Security Bureau, the People's Procuracy, and the People's Court of Hefei City, far from Chongqing to ensure impartiality. According to official information released by Xinhua News Agency, China's investigation agency diligently, seriously, and meticulously worked to uphold the spirit of the law. They conducted 394 interviews with witnesses and individuals involved in the case and compiled 16 sets of evidence documents totaling 1,468 pages. Shortly thereafter, Gu Kaile was convicted of orchestrating Neil Haywood's murder. Though not all evidence was made public, the trial was closed to foreign reporters and even domestic reporters were strictly monitored. At this point, the circle of trusted individuals who had helped Bo Shi Lai and Gu Kai Lai conceal Neil Haywood's murder turned against them. They secretly preserved a piece of Haywood's heart tissue as evidence and sent it to Wang Lijun, which became crucial evidence in the case. The incident gained increased exposure and discussion, particularly when Neil Haywood's family spoke out. On April 13, 2012, Haywood's widow, Wang Lulu, visited the British Embassy in Beijing to apply for a visa to travel to the UK with her two young children, expressing concerns for their safety from those who had murdered her husband. The entrance to her family's gated compound in Beijing was guarded by China's military, and she was instructed not to communicate with international journalists. Even the British Prime Minister initiated discussions with a senior Chinese government official regarding the Haywood case. Despite the crime being exposed, Gu Kailai continued to receive considerable external support. When Gu Kailai's trial on August 9, 2012 was made public, people in China and abroad were surprised to learn that Gu Kailai and her accomplices did not wear prison uniforms during the trial. The defendant was not handcuffed and maintained a calm demeanor, constantly smiling. It was later revealed that the person appearing as Gu Kailai in court was actually an imposter a 46-year-old woman from Hebei Province, China, named Zhao Tianchao. Instead of conducting the trial of Ms. Gu Kailawai in the fair and just manner promised to the British Consulate General, the proceedings were shrouded in mystery, partly because Neil Haywood was British. For reasons not fully explained, assessments were made of Gu Kailai's mental health, leading to a conclusion that she was depressed and paranoid. Additionally, Gu's lineage as the daughter of General Gu Jingsheng and a mother who was also a veteran Chinese official, was considered a mitigating factor in her case. Ultimately, after a series of relentless legal battles and public protests, Gu Kailai was sentenced to death on August 10, 2012, concluding the saga of a prominent entrepreneur and politician in Chongqing. On the precipice of her fate, confronted with the grim specter of the death sentence, Gu Kailai glimpsed a sliver of redemption in the darkness. Her path to salvation lay in unveiling the sinister web of corruption spun by her husband, Bo Xilai, before the watchful eyes of the Chinese Communist Party. Bo Xilai's ascent to the apex of Chongqing's political hierarchy was marred by a litany of illicit activities. His relentless pursuit of power was paved with bribery and deceit, actions meticulously obscured to hoodwink the party itself. In a daring pivot, Gu Kailai orchestrated a betrayal of epic proportions, choosing to turn the tide against Bo Xilai in a desperate bid to claw back from the abyss. Her appearance at the trial was marked by a grave solemnity as she stood as a pivotal witness in the case that sought to dismantle Bo Xilai's legacy. The prosecutor's delivery of her testimony peeled away the layers of intrigue that had shrouded a family once at the zenith of China's political landscape. The judicial gavel fell hard on August 26, 2013, concluding Bo Xilai's trial in a spectacle of justice served. The subsequent verdict on September 22, 2013, by the Jinan court, was a resounding denouncement of Bo Xilai's actions, 
sealing his fate with a life sentence devoid of redemption. His litany of crimes, accepting bribes, corruption, and abuse of power, earned him decades in confinement and stripped him of any political future. Yet the specter of justice remains insatiable, with the Chinese populace and the global community alike acknowledging the inadequacy of the verdict to fully atone for the duo's transgressions. The lingering enigma surrounding Bo Xilai and Gu Kailai's current whereabouts continues to fuel speculation and intrigue, a testament to the enduring shadow they cast over the fabric of Chinese political history.